Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This is Shadow Fury 63 bringing you an exhibition match between Lori and Flipstip. This is going to be on Sapphire Shores, and we'll begin right away. So, Sapphire Shores is not a map we have seen recently. Actually, at all. I don't think I've ever casted a game on this map. It's, as you can see, a fairly large map, a decent amount of metal on it, and a big watery section in the middle. There is a dry version of this map, but these are not that's not what the players are playing right now. They are playing the version with the sea in the middle. So it'll probably be going both players are starting out with hovercrafts, so no surprises there. And well given the size and given that the water, hovercrafts make perfect sense. And also the starting areas are a bit elevated compared to the rest of the map, so it's a it can be a little bit difficult for the units to get up the ramps into their opponent's base, but it's not gonna be too hard. It's just a matter of making sure that they aren't under fire while doing that. That's gonna be the big thing. Right now, we're starting with Scrubbers from Lori and from Flipstip, also Scrubbers. So both players are just getting early raiding forces. Another one focusing too much on risking late game economy. Although, Lori is getting an earlier quill. So Lori is definitely going for a bit more of an economic focus early on, while Flipstip appears to be a bit more focused on... No, actually, never mind. Flipstip has his own quill, so both players are playing the map. They are they are going for the fact that the map is a fairly large map. It can support having a lot of builders at the start. Don't have to worry too much about raiding right at the very beginning of the game. While Lori does have a few more harassment forces coming in. A couple more scrappers. Two scrappers compared to Flipstip's one, which is rather interesting. And Actually, just realized I... Bear with me one second. Sorry, I'm... Unfortunately, this replay was not done on the actual... Oh, come on. Where is it? It was not done with the actual game. It didn't get uploaded properly, so I have to use an engine. I have to use just the engine on its own. I can't go through 0k lobby, so some of my settings aren't quite what I'd like them to be. But anyway, now that's out of the way. So a scrubber coming in from the north for Flipstip, very wisely using the top ramp. Where well, actually he doesn't know that Lori's not there, but it will work out. Lori isn't going to be firing down on that scrubber on its way up. However, Lori is going over to the west side, which is or sorry the. Of course, he's going to the west side. That's where Flipstep is. He's going to the south side, which is much more relevant. And Flipstep has already set up defenses there. So these scrubbers are going to have a much harder time getting up than Flipstep scrubbers, which are going to be rushing right in and able to get this quill. This quill is out of position. Flipstep is going to take advantage of this. He probably won't be able to kill it before it gets into defenses, but he's certainly going to try. Not going to go very far, though. That scrubber did not last long. So... At this point, Lori is definitely better set up to, to go for harassment. Flipstep appears to be playing a bit more for the later game, getting a bunch of halberds instead of using scrubbers. Halberds can definitely get through the defenses a lot better, much higher HP, and of course they have a lot of... They have a lot of armor when they aren't firing. That's a big thing about halberds. They do not take a lot of damage when they are not shooting. It's only when they start firing that they actually start to take meaningful amounts of damage. Obviously you can kill them with enough fire regardless, but... Still very good at getting past defenses. And 1250 HP isn't bad to begin with. So it looks like... Yes, it, as you can see, Flipstep is definitely focused more on the late game than he is on the harassment game. Which, like I said, with a map of this size makes perfect sense. Lori, however, is doing a good job containing, making sure Flipstep doesn't actually get a whole lot of economy, getting rid of the metal extractors, getting rid of any workers that get out, or any builders that get out. So, Flipstip, he does still have the entire west side. He still has a couple more metal extractors. And he does obviously have power. He can still overdrive these metal extractors. But expanding from here is going to be fairly difficult. While Lori is working on expanding, he has a slightly weaker... Actually, he's, he's got to be reclaiming. No, he actually has a stronger economy at this point. So, Lori's harassment is paying off. Flipstip's economy is, at best, on par with Lori's. And it looks like mostly it's because Flipstip has started to expand to the south side of the map. And... Oh. And just so people are aware, this is actually a replay I'm casting. I know I call it 0k live, but generally speaking, it's replays that I'm casting. So, in case you're wondering, this game is not being played as I'm casting it. It has happened once, and that was pretty cool, but I usually don't have that luxury. At any rate, back to the game. So, Lori, able to get past the turret. I completely missed this. While addressing the concern about whether or not this is live, I completely missed that Lori does an awesome harassment job here. Flipstep lost half of his metal extractors along the west or along the center from north south center. He is 
taking a lot of damage while Flipsteps going for a counter raid, and Lori getting up quite a few scrubbers here to try to take care of these halberds. The halberds, on the other hand, not too worried about that they're actually out of the way. One of the halberds will be surrounded though, and yes, there we go. Lori is setting himself up to get rid of this halberd. Now the halberd, like I said, armor unless it's not firing, and it is firing, trying to get rid of the scrubbers, but it's gonna go down, taking the scrubber with it, but still going down to the bottom of the ocean. But the other two scrubbers get over the water and are getting into Lori's base. But Lori, like I said, is taking full advantage of his expansions. He has a major economic advantage. Flipstep has started to rebuild what he lost to those scrubbers, but that's still going to be a bit of a blow. Also, notice that the... Okay, there's the mace. So he does have a mace set up. If the scrubbers do get too close to that mace, they are going to die. It's very difficult for scrubbers to get rid of maces. Not impossible, but maces are designed to get rid of small raider units like scrubbers. So, Scrubbers do not have the easiest time dealing with them. However, that mace is also extremely slow. So, these Scrubbers, are they going to go for a counter raid or just going to go for defense? I think they might go for a counter raid, but it's hard to say. At this point, Lori has not actually chosen what to do with them yet. He is continuing just to build up his main base, just make sure, or build up his entire west, the entire east side of the map. He's not focused on the water quite yet. At this point, Flipstep has actually, well, Flipstep's gotten a lot more economy going. He's actually got a fusion react. Oh, wow. Okay. That's not something you see a whole lot in 1v1 game. Granted, at this point, we are dealing with 24 metal and 35 metal from Lori, but still. That's not huge. And there we go. Lori is going for harassment again with the scrubbers. He's avoiding that mace deftly, though he... There we go. I was going to say, he needs scalpels to deal with that mace, or could very much benefit from scalpels to deal with that mace, and he has exactly what he needs to deal with that mace. Now, this halberd, on the other hand, is having a bit of a rough time trying to get rid of the scalpel. The scalpel... Sorry, the Scrubber is doing a great job. Not Scalpel, Scalpel's over here. And if there's a Scalpel, the Halberd would already be dead. If it was firing like that. But no, these are Scrubbers, and they're once again coming in. Flipstep is losing even more economy. Lori getting himself a Caretaker, and Lori actually has been accessing metal at this point, but this Caretaker will take care of that nicely. Pushing that factory very hard. And Flipstep, his Fusion Plant is still under construction. He's losing a lot of his economy in the meantime. That Fusion Plant will help a ton. That will... Get a fair amount of overdrive, but he's losing his commander in the process as well, and the commander does have energy cell. At this point, Flipstep's power is not a concern. If he loses that, it's not the biggest deal, but still a bad thing to lose your commander. You never want to lose your commander. Like, that's a lot of build power that you lose. There's potential for things like resurrection and such that commanders have. You do not want to lose that if you can avoid it. And Flipstep has avoided it. And getting an airplane factory, the seven, minute, seven and a half minutes into the game, getting an airplane factory on 26 metal... Even with the overdrive from the fusion plant, this is only popping up one of these metal extractors. Actually, sorry, the metal extractors are being benefited quite a bit. If we look, these three metal extractors are being overdriven by the fusion reactor, so that's getting them up to about 4.5, up from 2, which is pretty good. Although, he might... I don't know if he's going to start expanding that grid all the way over to these metal extractors here, but he's definitely got the metal extractors right by his opening area, nicely overdriven. However, Lori at the same time has taken a ton of the map. He's got a lot more map control, and thanks to that map control, he has managed to get a great deal of metal. I mean, he's got twice the economy that Flipstep has. That is going to pay off fairly soon. As you can see, Lori is pushing extremely hard, actually getting a penetrator pretty quickly. And even with that penetrator not using up all of, and getting an airplane plan himself, not using up all of his metal with two caretakers and three of his workers working on that. He is, like, Lori is getting a huge army at this point. Flipstep, his army is nowhere near as large, but he is focusing a bit more heavily on early planes. Okay, getting Shadow instead of... Interesting, I thought he was going to get Phoenix for that, but he's only getting Shadow instead. And at the same year, getting a shipyard? Okay, Flipstep is getting very focused on factories here. And Lori is... Unit under attack. Well, his scalpels are doing a pretty decent job, but unfortunately, he did take a fair amount of damage on that one scalpel. And Shadow trying to do what he can to... That was an odd bombing, so dove right down, hit that scalpel, and went away. That was interesting. And there goes another one, unfortunately a bit wasted, that was destroyed by the mace. But even then, I mean, Lori can afford to lose a fair amount of this force he has here, and it still won't make a huge difference. He's, I mean, yeah, he has lost some of his forces, but think about it. He has twice the economy, or, well, okay, less than twice now, but he can still afford to lose a fair amount of forces. The thing is... Flipstep is pushing pretty heavily, though. He is not going down without a fight, and he is... 
Apparently also wanting to get as many factories as he can. Getting a very quick Typhoon. Interesting. So that's going to be... That is probably going to give him the water, actually. The Typhoon there. Those should be able to get rid of everything that has been sent out by Lori so far. But it does still seem like it might be a bit of an uphill struggle. Now, Flipstip, there might be something I'm missing here. Getting another fusion plant. So he's definitely working on the overdrive on these metal extractors. Rather than trying to go for map control, he does definitely have some forward bases set up. He can get the map control if he wants to. He can easily just get these metal extractors, but he's quite worried, and rightly so, probably, about Lori's scrubbers, and, like I said, rightly so. Mace doing what it can against those, and what it can do is quite effective, and there it is, that Typhoon! But it's still a bit of an uphill battle, given that it has to deal with all of those scalpels, but... And, of course, the scrubbers coming in as well, but another Typhoon will be able to get rid of these scrubbers, no problem. And... See what else has Lori got here coming in. A lot of, oh, a lot of Avengers coming in. Making sure he gets air control very quickly. And getting several penetrators as well. It appears to be just saving those. Probably going for a bit of a later assault with these things. And once he gets probably about five or six of them, send them out and then just tear down everything. Just one shot everything he comes across. But at this point, the C game is going to flip step. As you can see, his Typhoons are doing a wonderful job taking care of these scrubbers, but... Scalpels are still going to be a threat. This scalpel here will be able to take out that Typhoon, and they both go down simultaneously. But it doesn't matter. Flipstep is taking care of the sea. He has taken over the sea. The Avengers doing a pretty good job just scouting out, seeing what's going on, but they haven't actually dealt with it too much. Now, this is what they're meant to do. Getting rid of the Shadow, getting rid of any of the air forces that Flipstep tries to send out. But at this point, Flipstep seems to be much more focused on building his sea forces... And now their economies are pretty much even, actually. Flipstep has managed to rebuild a bit. He's getting also the reclaim. That's helping out a ton. So Flipstep's economy is starting to get to parity with Lori's. And Lori is... Uh, let's see here. He is going to have... I'm just going to turn this off. Anyway, Lori is... What the heck? Sorry, I, the sun went and did weird things. But like I said, this isn't my standard thing, so some of the options aren't quite what I expect them to be. Like, for example, the sun is moving around, which is not exactly what I wanted. Oh well. Anyway, getting back to the game, we do have Flipstip taking the sea... Yeah, if he hadn't taken over the sea yet, he is... Well, he has to fight these penetrators, though. This is where Lori is going to try to get back into this. Shredders as well to get rid of the Avengers. Not a bad choice. The Avengers are actually... I think they're gone. I think that Shredder already did his job, gonna think of it. However, the Penetrator, able to knock it out. And, of course, the rest of these forces as well. A bunch of Shredders and... No, never mind. The Avengers are just fine. They cannot go into the sea. That's the one thing. The Penetrators will have to do their job first. But that's something they can do pretty easily. I mean, this is... This is the unit that Hovercrafts basically build for is Penetrator. It will get... Especially four of them like this. We'll get rid of most anything very quickly. Five of them, never mind. More than I expected. And more coming along. Consider how much Lori is pumping his economy into this factory. It's no surprise that he has so many penetrators. At the 13 minute mark in the game, and we see more... Interesting. More Skeeters coming in. So, Flipstep focusing a bit more on low cost raiders. Good idea, because penetrators have a high reload time. They can kill, pretty much one shot everything. But because of their reload time, they have a harder time getting rid of small raider forces. Because the Raider Forces, I mean, one of them gets killed. Okay, well, that's a, that's great. One dies. The other dozen or so can just finish it off. Not the biggest deal. Of course, Penetrators do fire through units. So, with the right positioning, Lori might still be able... Or rather, the wrong positioning on Flipstep's part. Lori might still, still be able to get rid of a lot of these Skeeters in one shot. And more Hovercrafts... Okay, so Scrubbers are being built again by Flipstep. He's going back to that. With... Massive Raider Forces coming in, trying to get rid of these Defenders. And able to do so just fine. The Urchin was not actually built, unfortunately, so the Torpedoes are not going to be available to get rid of the Skeeters. However, the Penetrators are, and this is where the moment of truth comes in, but the Penetrators can get rid of these forces, and it looks like the Skeeters are doing the job they were meant to do, getting into the Penetrators. The Survivors able to finish off the Penetrators, and that will definitely be a big blow for Lori, as Penetrators did a great job, but now at this point... All these Skeeters coming in, the only downside is they can't go on land. So Flipstep has the water, but he can't bring these over to the land. They're kind of stuck. 
He does have a lot of scrubbers that are coming in, but the Skeeters are his main focus at this point. He has like, two dozen of those. And that's not going to help him too much at this point. Also, several shadows being sent in to try to take care of the Skeeter population. And I think they are not going to be the best Skeeter repellents. I, honestly, I, if Phoenix is going to hit water, Phoenix is probably a better idea. I think that Napalm will burn on... I think Napalm in this game will burn on water. I know in real life it will, but I think in this game it also will. It probably models that. So, I'm a little bit surprised that Shadows were sent to try to deal with those. They don't have the biggest splash damage radius. Like shadows are really meant to hit one target. And unfortunately for the Shadows, these Shredders are in a great position to deal with them before they can deal any damage. The Shadows are going down, but that's not where Lori is spending most of his money. Most of his money is being spent on his Hovercrafts, on his Penetrators, and to a lesser extent, on the Maces. So that is going to be the big thing he has. And the Maces will be able to get rid of the Skeeters without much issue. So once again, Flipstep is really at mercy of positioning. Let's see if he has anything else up his sleeve. At this point, Flipstep has gone for three factories. And I'm curious if he has any more planned. While Lori, on the other hand, going for a standard two factories, he's not really focused on anything but just pushing as much as he can out of the factories he has built so far. What is Flipstep going to do now? He is, he has sea control. Flipstep has control of the entire ocean. Lori has control of his entire side of the land. And Flipstep, his side of the land, he does have the metal extractors. He hasn't bothered to defend it too much because at this point, he's able to just interfere with everything going through the water before it even gets to his side. Does not have to worry about it at all. While Lori, he does have to worry about the fact that the water is not open to him. He can't just go in and take it out. He has to... Well, he has to go in the hard way. The maces, the penetrators are doing a fairly decent job, but once again, like I said, they are not the best at dealing with large swarms of small units. Maces, however, are very good at dealing with large swarms of small units, and that's exactly what they're doing. Now, this Typhoon gets hit by the penetrator. That will probably do it for the Sea Force, but even then, no, not even then. The maces will just finish everything off. So the maces are taking back the water, and Flipstep doing it. Still a pretty decent job getting some... Okay, Crusader. That's unexpected. And a Leecho as well to take care of the maces. Unfortunately, not really taking care of them at all. That Leecho... I don't know if it missed or if it just splash damage doesn't apply too much in water. But it really didn't help too much. And this Shredder is trying to do what it can. The Destroyer here, the Crusader. A good option against the maces. But the Shadows will be able to finish that off. And that... Actually, the maces alone, as we can see, just finished that off. No problem. So, Flipstep... I expect he might be switching over away from sea at this point, since he is starting to get pushed out of the water. Surprisingly enough, it is becoming a bit of a hard... Well, a bit of a hard sell for him. I mean, he's got... He still has a fairly powerful naval army, but he... Or a navy, rather. <laughs> That's what they're called nowadays, yes. It's a fairly powerful navy, but he doesn't have a... Well, he doesn't have a lot of ways of getting past that from Navy into anything else. He does, however, have a commander with Resurrection, Resurrection as many forces as he can, but the biggest thing for his commander is that the commander is underwater right now. None of Loria's troops can hit underwater. Hovercrafts cannot hit underwater. So that is going to be a big game changer here, I think. Or it's the only thing, actually, actually not even necessarily a game changer, but it's the only thing that Flipstep has as a chance is that he can resurrect things from under the water. Both his forces and Lori's forces. And Flipstep has tons of money with which to do that, so I wouldn't be surprised if he does that. But it looks like his commander is... Well, trying to hit above ground. It's not going to do any good. But he is resurrecting the maces. He is able to get himself the army from everything on the bottom of the ocean here. While Lori's commander... Where is Lori's commander anyway? Lori's commander should be around here somewhere. It's probably over... You know, probably over on land somewhere. I don't think he's trying to go for the water with his commander. I think he is still on land. There it is. Lori's commander is only level one. Does not have a Lazarus device. It is not focused. Not going to be able to take advantage of all this except by reclaim. And the sea is at this point becoming no man's land. Flipstep has not completely rescinded control over it, but he hasn't completely kept control over it either. I mean, he's he took a major beating. His commander is able to resurrect a bunch of things, but still, he took a huge beating. The resurrection is not instant, and that is something that's going to be hard to deal with. And the thing is, Lori able to get past 
the lack of anti-air, all the anti-air boats were destroyed except for this one shredder, but that shredder is out of position, allowing Lori's forces to get in here to scout out what's going on. A bunch of energy trans- okay, this is interesting. I haven't seen energy transmission pylons used in single player, or pretty much ever. Most of the time they're recommended not to be used, but I guess I can kind of see why Flipstep went for them. Just to overdrive without having to build a bunch of power plants, although admittedly... Yeah, I guess it's fewer- it's less money to, than building solar plants across the entire way. So I can sort of see why. The Shredder, however, is in position to get rid of the retreating forces, or at least partially get rid of them, but... Nice use of Penetrator right there to get rid of that Shredder, saving most of those... Most of the planes that were going back home. And... Flipstep's commander is still pushing forward. I'm a bit surprised Flipstep hasn't decided... Well, okay, I'm not surprised he hasn't decided an Amorphous commander. He doesn't have a lot of metal in stock, but... I think at this point, the best thing he, he could do for the resurrection strategy is just get a bunch of build power modules. I assume his commander does have build power modules on higher upgrade points. And that... Huh, well... Looks like Flipstep is focusing back on air and hover. He's still somewhat focusing on land. He is getting... Okay, a riot missile cruiser. Interesting. That... Oh, there's another one. Okay, so that should help a lot. Or at least it would if it were for the fact that Avengers can just power out of there and avoid getting hit. But still, that was... That was kind of necessary that it had to power out of there. Getting... Let's see, Lori is... Getting rid of the Sea Factory as best he can. It's not going down quickly though, and he is losing a fair amount of his forces in the process. The Enforcer able to take care of both Shadows, or possibly both Shadows, definitely one of the Shadows. And the Avengers... Just too many Avengers to be dealt with by Vamps at this point. Lori is doing a pretty good job just raiding a bit. He's not able to deal a lot of damage at this point. That's the one problem. He needs to deal a bit more damage. This Leecho, if it went over the north, that would be probably an interesting thing. But it looks like he's more focused on getting rid of the Missile Cruiser, and I don't blame him. That Missile Cruiser is scary. Because, or the Enforcer, rather. That is scary. I can definitely see why he'd be concerned about that one. Looks like it is it is the powerful unit for the Sea Factory that... I mean, so is Crusader. The thing is the Sea Factory is kind of like heavy tanks, except on land. It's focused very much on just fairly expensive, but very individually powerful forces. With the possible exception of Skeeters, those work well in groups. But a lot of this stuff is individually expensive, but individually very, very powerful. And the Enforcer is clearly no exception. It's going to be a bit... Well, once again, we're back to flips to have taken over the water. Lori has to fight another uphill battle along here, and he is... Well, he's got a lot of scrubbers to deal with that. He is definitely focused on finishing that up, but I'm a bit surprised that Flipstep hasn't just pushed a bit more forward. He's not focused on the Hovercrafts. Like I said, he can go this far. He can go this far with the C units, and no further. That's as far as he can go. He can't actually kill Lori with C, but Lori can kill him with Hovercraft, so I'm still kind of surprised that he hasn't gone for that. And Leecho coming in, getting rid of, or trying to get rid of the Crusader, not quite able to do so. Didn't quite hit. Another Leecho coming in is able to, well, deal some damage to this mace here, but the Vamps doing what they can to get rid of them, and the Vamps, however, are being destroyed by the Avengers. Too much air control by Lori. At this point, Lori has the sky. The sky is Lori's. The sea is not. The sea is flips us, but Lori's doing what he can. Getting two dozen scrubbers into the water, trying to get rid of these crusaders, able to get rid of one of them. Mace is doing a good job of hampering the scrubbers' efforts, however, but looks like two of them might go down. A razor gets in the middle of the water as well. That'll help with those leeches. The leeches have a ton of HP, so it's gonna be a bit tricky for just one of them to do the job. And another enforcer coming up. That's definitely the focus here is enforcers and crusaders. And I gotta say, I have never really seen Chainsaw? Okay. Sheesh, this is... this is a 1v1? I guess this is what happens when you get a map this large with water in the middle. Where you can't easily just attack from one side or the other. I mean... You never see chainsaws in 1v1. You never see in C, basically, for the most part, ever. But chainsaws, you never see, and that is gonna be a big deal for this Leecho. Unfortunately, that did not hit anything. I might have been trying to hit the chainsaw off radar. And it looks like that's exactly what it tried to do, but that Leecho did not manage crashing into the water and going down, and this Enforcer able to probably get rid of these Scrubbers. The thing is, the Scrubbers do have numbers on their side, but the Enforcer has a lot of splash damage, and that won't be enough. The Scrubbers at this point look like they should be able to finish it off. The Crusader coming in to try to provide a bit more fire spark, and no! The Enforcer just barely saves its own life at the end. While at the same time, Crusaders... Sorry, Crusaders. The 
Chainsaw is able to get rid of these Avengers. Lori still has air control, but he can't easily enforce that over the water with his chainsaw here. And the, well, the Razor's Kiss is still here, so that's two big problems he has to deal with before he can actually get past that. And the main base, not a whole lot there. Flipsip's main base isn't particularly vulnerable, but he does have a lot of reclaim in the bottom of the ocean. He's not going for resurrection much anymore, just going for reclaim. And another Legio goes down. There's another 2,000 metal for Lori. He did deal quite a bit of damage with that, but Legios are still very expensive. And another two dozen scrubbers look like they are coming back into the water. While vamps go over, Flips are trying to retake air control with vamps against Avengers. We'll see how this works out. The Avengers are able to get rid of the vamps still too quickly. The vamps do not have the numbers to get rid of those Avengers, unfortunately for them. So that vamp goes to crash to its death and the rest of the Avengers are still alive. Getting rid of the last vamp and that is... Once again, Lori keeping air control. He's doing a very nice job with that. Now, Flipstep is... Gonna have to deal with a big Bertha. Okay, this has become the, obviously... This has become officially the most drawn-out, convoluted, at least 1v1-like 1v1 match I have ever seen. Like, Bertha? Cobra? I mean, how many times do you see these sort of defensive units used in this game? Like, this is... This never happens in a 1v1 game, but... This is happening now. Sapphire's Wars is just big enough to support that. And at the same time, Flipstep going around, getting hit by Stardust here, and that Stardust is doing a great job. Gotten rid of half of the Scrubbers. The rest of the Scrubbers are going to die on killing the energy transmission pylon, but... Well, not quite all of them going to die, but very close to death. Wow, that... That's pretty sad. The last Scrubber is getting killed... Or No, not quite! Able to dodge the Shadow... And able to continue to harass along the side here. There aren't a lot of defenses out in the back, so at this point, that scrubber, however, going to its death into the Stardust to avoid Stardust. Sorry, avoid other scrubbers. Ended up getting himself killed by a Stardust, so didn't really have a way to win that engagement. And Lori, at this point, actually is starting to lose his economy. He's been taking some damage to the north. The Vamps did manage to deal some damage over to the north, and it looks like some Shadows as well are doing the damage they can. Getting rid of more Metal Extractors. Another Metal Extractor down, and Flipstep does have all this reclaim in the middle of the ocean. Well, reclaim more Resurrection. Either way, whichever way he wants to go about it, he has that. So Lori is starting to lose out. He needs to rebuild his economy, and he's probably going to do so. But it's, it's becoming an uphill battle for Lori. Flipstep with the sea control, is stopping Lori from doing a lot of effective harassment. And at this point, it looks like Flipstep is taking advantage of the sea control, setting some scrubbers over to the other side, over to Lori's side of the map. It is going to be evenly matched, but this crusade, Crusader should provide enough fire support against these scrubbers that Flipstep scrubbers will win out. Although, unfortunately, they aren't in the best position. Lori scrubbers were in a better position to start out, and the Crusader not quite able to hit effectively, so that is not going to work out. Lori able to defend against this. He's losing a couple scrubbers in the process, but he's still able to defend. And three more scrubbers coming to the north. This is going to be a... Well, actually, not that much easier. The Avengers can still hit ground, so these scrubbers are going to take a fair amount of damage. And the Leechos going for the scrubbers. Interesting. I'm a bit surprised that Lori hasn't used the Leechos for harassment, getting rid of these factories over here. He's just gone for the scrubbers entirely. That... That's interesting. He's using Leechos for defense. I mean, I can see him using that on the C units, because these enforcers are extremely tough. Leechos are... A viable option there, but against Scrubbers, that seems a little bit underwhelming. Like, I mean, sure, you're not paying for the Leechos to fire, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. I'm just surprised. Anyway, the Leechos are going back over to this area here just to defend, I, or to attack randomly in the ground. I, I think Flipsta probably isn't focused on those Leechos so much, because he did have an area attack command on them, and that was a bit of a waste. But this Leecho here, just going over, just flying around. And I think what he's worried about is that he can't see... Oh, let's see, just double check his point of view. I want to see from his point of view, I think he has... No, he actually has the... He has nothing. He can't see anything going on there. So, no surprise, he has no way of seeing what exactly Flipstep is up to. So he doesn't know that he can go along this north side of the map. For all he knows, Flipstep has the entire area covered, and this one Flipstep does. So Lori probably could have gone around that, but he didn't know, so I can't really blame him for that one. However, what is important is that Flipstep is starting to push in. Once again, sending out another attack force. He's got a bunch of fire support on the shore, but he doesn't have anything further in. And this Bertha is almost done. 
really quite surprising there, but yeah, the Bertha is very much almost done. So I'm... Actually, I'm surprised why my... Hmm. I'm not sure what's happened with the line of sight. For some reason, it just went weird. But anyway, double-checking from Flipstep point of view. Flipstep does have... There we go. There's some hovers coming in, and not a lot of defenses in the way. The Scrubbers will be able to finish off this Quill, and they will be able to just go up and finish everything off. The Leecho, however, able to get rid of about half of them. Not a bad shot there, so I can see why the defense Leechos are in place. Getting rid of a couple more, and that is... Like I said, at this point, those Leechos should not go out to attack. There's just too much on shore to have to worry about. I don't think that would work out. But that is still going to be a very powerful assault right there. And the Penetrator's doing... Well, doing not that much. I mean, the thing is, they can kill one-shot these Scrubbers, but like I said earlier in the game, Penetrators lose to large numbers of Raiders because they can one-shot one thing every 10 seconds or so. Actually, maybe 20 seconds. I'm not quite sure what the reload time is. Let's check. The reload time is 20 seconds. So yeah, once every 20 seconds they can one-shot something. But Penetrator, sorry, Scrub at this point takes less than 20 seconds to build. <laughs> so that's not really worth it, unfortunately. And it looks like Flipstep is moving in for the kill. He has the Scrubbers coming in. He has some Scrubber defenses to deal with. But at this point, it's just a matter of pushing more and more forces in. He has the C. He is not even focused on building C units any longer. He is con completely focused on building air and building hovers. Mostly on air, actually. Getting a bunch of vamps out. How many vamps does he have? Four. Okay, maybe not a bunch. But still getting vamps out. And making... A sure, he has what he can. And the Bertha here is... Actually, how far can that hit? Okay, it hit all the way out to here. So we can start to hit Flipstep's side of the shore. Looks like he's primarily focused on using it for defense, however, and possibly to get rid of these enforcers. But it doesn't have the best accuracy, so I don't know how well that's going to work. We'll find out pretty soon, and apparently not very well. But the Leechos are doing an okay job getting some shots in. The Vamps... Going down to Avengers, but the Leechos are going down as well. The Bertha is once again firing in. Unfortunately, another miss. Another shot, another miss. That is rather unfortunate, I'm afraid, but... The Bertha does not have the best accuracy. It has a huge amount of power, but it doesn't have a whole lot of accuracy, and that is kind of the weakness. I'm honestly a little bit surprised. Given what's gone on so far, I'm a bit surprised that Lori didn't just go for a silencer, but... Bertha's not a bad choice either. Silencer being the strategic nuke silo, he could just fired up a nuke right into Flipstep's base and dealt with everything right there. No, apparently that is not what he's up to. I'm just going to double check something. Sorry, bear with me once again. Mm, no. <sighs> okay, I'm not sure what's going on with the brightness. Why it's so dark in the middle of the map, but... At any rate... We are seeing a lot of... Well, a lot of what Flipstep can do, and Flipstep is doing a great deal here. Well, at least as far as defenses go. He does have Scrubbers coming in. It looks like he's now trying to once again go for a kill, but it's just he doesn't have a lot of forces on ground to deal with what's going on here. Getting Flails as well, but getting gunships now. Okay, and a Strider Hub. Getting a Dante. Oh, oh my goodness. Probably should cast more team matches at this point, because a lot of these units are kind of unfamiliar to me. You don't see these in 1v1. You never see Striders in 1v1. They just don't come up. The game never lasts long enough for them to come up. But apparently now they are, and Flipstep is pushing in strongly to get rid of Lori's forces, and Lori trying to hit back to the shipyard with the Bertha, and that actually is a better target. It's a wider target, it's more likely to get hit, and eventually it'll go down, but at this point the shipyard doesn't matter, that's the thing. Flipstep is really just a matter of time. He has his Dante done, or at least a Dante done, and I'll be heading right over once that is... Where is that, Dante? Ah, I see. It's being transported over by a Vindicator. Right over to this side of the map right here. Right into Lori's base. And that will probably finish off the game. Once that's done, I don't see it going any way for Lori. I think he's out. I mean, Flipstep at this point has twice the economy of Lori. He has 93 metal. He has nearly triple-digit metal. So I think it can be safely said that Sapphire Shores non-dry is a very, very long-winded 1v1 map. Definitely interesting from an experimental perspective, but it is a long-winded map. It takes a long time for anything to happen on it. 
and Dante has come into play, getting into Flipstip, sorry, getting into Lori's base. Flipstip actually taking a lot of damage there. Dante is able to start dealing with the forces attacking it, but once again, we are dealing with a single heavy unit against a lot of raiders. The flamethrower is effective, but the leechos are nicely prepared to deal with it. And we do have another one coming in, but that's the one thing. Another Dante is ready, and this one here, not able to do all that much damage, actually. Able to get rid of some of the scrubbers, and other than that, actually still alive. We might still actually do quite a bit. The Hovercraft Factory is the big target here. If it gets rid of the Hovercraft Factory, it's going to be huge. And it looks like focusing more on the Caretakers, just to make sure there's less build power going to it. And getting the Hovercraft Factory, the Leecho is not, not able to kill it in time. There goes the Airplane Factory. That Dante has gone down the Airplane Factory at half health. But the Hovercraft Factory, which is Lori's big asset, is down. And it looks like Flipstip, he's setting up a funnel web. Okay, he is... Getting another Vindicator just to get these this Dante and get everything else in he said he needs so he can actually finish this off. And another Hovercraft platform coming in for Lori. He still has a bunch of builders. They can still rebuild the Hovercraft platform, but that is going to hold him back. And Lori has surrendered after that big attack on the Dante. I just don't even know this was the weirdest game I have casted. And I apologize if I missed everything, because I probably did. But yeah, that was bizarre. So I hope you enjoyed that, despite the bizarreness and the slight asides. And I'll be back with another shorter, much, much shorter game in just a few minutes. So stay tuned.